Hello and welcome to my show TikTok, where we talk about what makes successful people tick and what it took for them to pursue their passions, follow their dreams, and achieve their goals. Who doesn't know my guest? And yet, do we really actually know her? Her name is now not only colloquially iconic and used in daily conversation as a verb, it has become world famous. The success of her empire is awe-inspiring and provides hundreds of people with lucrative livelihoods. Her life and its intimate details, once private, have been splayed open for public consumption even before the advent of social media, which she has since totally embraced and harnessed to her advantage. Today, join me as we delve into her incredible journey towards success and personal fulfillment. I'm sure you can't wait any longer to learn all her secrets. So please welcome Dr. Vicky Bello. Hi. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Mirza. Hello, classmate. Hi, classmate. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You guys don't know, but we're classmates in ballet. Yeah. Not that I, she's very good. I'm no, I'm not. For posture. <laughs> You're so good. I'm You've been not. for a long time, right? <laughs> Vicky adopted we me. miss you, Perry. To be we miss you, teacher Perry. <laughs> I know she's doing Zoom class. Do you follow her? No, no, but we should. We should wait okay. before we start. Uh, Bella Beauty is giving away three Zo. Is that how you pronounce it? Zio, Zio, Zane Obaji, Zane Obaji, getting skin ready kits. Yes, see, beautiful skin, skin ready kits. Yeah, we're going to give uh, away it's, it's 30 a boxes. Yes. For those you of want. you with the best comments or questions. So please I'm comment. I'm sharing. <laughs> <laughs> please comment. I love below. the title of your show. Thank you. How, did you. how did you get it? I mean, you just saw everybody's into Kasi TikTok. I na, was doing TikTok, and then I thought of the sound alike. So, parang. TikTok, where we talk about what makes people tick. <laughs> I'm cute. So we'll inform the winners later if they got picked. Mm -hmm. So I'm so uh, amazed every time I do ballet with Vicky because at her age, which we are free to reveal, right? <laughs> uh, yes, everybody knows. <laughs> at her age of 64, her body is amazing. 63! But still, I see her body. I used to see her body twice a week. And that's only like her twice a week ballet workout. You work out every day, right? Twice a day? No, no, man. I'm down to once a day. Once. I used to do twice a day, but you know, you reach a level of diminishing returns. Oh, Like, yeah. So I realized, so there's this Nike, tra Nike training camp yeah. and they basically work out five times a week only. Oh so gosh. what I used to do is do your ballet, come to you. Before we did ballet, I'd do Bikram yoga. I was obsessed to stay slim because I'm very afraid of being fat. And I realized, parang you don't give your body enough time to recuperate. Right. So you lose muscle tone. So it's better to just work out and I've known this for a long time because I was an aerobic instructor five times a week. Yeah. And you just have to shock your body and do a different workout each time. So with the Nike training camp, which is free, by the way, as an app for now, while they want people to stay home. Are you an endorser? <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'm just so killing with the whole. It's so scientifically done. It's only 45 minutes max. A lot of the workouts are only 38 minutes. But wow, your body... I think, honestly, uh, I think this is the best body I've had in the last 30 years. Right. You know, because it's just, yeah. it's just, I like my muscle tone. Because the first day is like strength training. Pinay pa naman yung instructor. Her name is oh. Bettina, Bettina Gozo. Sabi, my son said, oh, mommy, Bettina, she must be Pinoy. But I said, how, huh, Why? Daming Bettina because, because Bettina is a Filipino name. According to me, she never met a Bettina from any other country. And then I said, really? She looks she looks black, but she has straight hair. Okay. So maybe she's a mix. But then we checked, oh, nga Pinay, half Pinay. So, wow. Tama siya. Anyway, so she's really her butt is so beautiful. Yeah. 
you're really defying aging. So every time I feel lazy, I think of you. And what you can do. <laughs> well, I'm reading a book now that you might want to read. It's called Lifespan. And it's written by David Sinclair. Oh my gosh, I'm a fan of David Sinclair. Oh my gosh, he's so I amazing. Hey, him. somebody's here. Scarlett, say hi, Tita Mirza. Hi, Scarlett. I, she can't hear, sorry. How do I make her hear? Hi, Let's take it out. How are you? What are you doing? How are you doing? What are I you doing, sweetheart? Finished with piano. No. Oh, natutulala. Are you going to play piano? Are you done with piano? Okay, you have to make a side off for them. She's You're very good. good. Yeah. Um, yes, Rani. Can you already play with me? Ayan. Okay, you can leave, play with leapfrog. Go, go, go. I have to have an interview. But why did you hide it? I don't know. I never hit it, darling. I don't know. Maybe daddy hid it. We're, so trying, to keep her, we're trying to keep her away from iPad. Oh. Um, so, oh, so David Sinclair. Galina. Yes, I love him. So few people. I follow all his articles and videos because we have to fight aging. Right? No, but for me, the big discovery with that is that aging is not uh, inevitable. Yeah, that it's a it's, disease. It's a right? disease, and they're pushing and, for the World Health Organization to treat it as a disease, which gave me a lot of hope. Because prior to that, of course, I'm getting older, so I was thinking, I know, I'm really just getting older. But when I realized that. You know, like the first during this Corona time, I don't know if you saw the interview, they asked him, what would you advise everybody? And he said, move, yeah. whatever you do, oh. just move. <laughs> so working out is really very important. So for those who don't know, David Sinclair is a uh, scientist from Harvard. Yeah, uh, he's not. a, And he's been studying aging and the genetic um causes of aging right not genetic he's been saying the genome so we're now going to the level of of genes on why you're yeah. aging which is great and he said we we're, we've been barking up the wrong tree we've been treating the symptoms of aging right which are you know uh alzheimer's arthritis diabetes right. he said wrong 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 we should be treating aging as a disease yeah. So that you don't get all these things to follow. And uh, I've been doing that. And I've, I've been doing that the last six months. Following his advice, plant-based food. So you've been fasting also? Yes, I've really been doing a lot of intermittent. Lucky for me, it's Christian time. It's four days of fasting, but I do really fast. I don't, because he says you have to stress the body just to wake it up a bit so that it will right. rearrange your hormones and your genetic uh, right. codes. So you should, intermittent is really very good for you. Are really? you fasting also? Yeah. I do oh, alternate okay. day fasting. So oh. I'm, yeah. do you, are you a vegetarian? No. no. I'm a pescatarian. Uh -huh. Okay. So you know the pescatarian, explain to me salmon. Is huh? it unhealthy or healthy? Are you saying if it's wild... Yeah. It's because they're farmed and some farmed salmon is colored. Like they dye it pink. Oh, that's why. Terrible. But is so if it, is it just a dye or the food that they eat as well? Like when they're I farmed? know that commercial farmers actually give you a choice of color. Isn't that oh terrible? my gosh. A oh no. Because the, the wild salmon yata is grayish and nobody wants to buy gray. So, oh, anyway. oh no. So if we see gray, that's actually the better salmon. Maybe. Not the orange. Yeah. I don't know, because so, I love salmon. That's my thing now. That's my fish of choice. I don't know. Anymore. So do you eat salmon? Can you tell yeah. if it's wild? No, I can't. But <laughs> <Okay. laughs> guessing going good. off topic as usual. Know, right? <laughs> Go on forever. How's business? So you open uh, you reopened. And you have we, like Protocol. Well, we're, we're, we were doing a slow rollout because we wanted to experiment and see how our new protocols were going to be. So our first clinic that we opened was Green Hills. And then after that, we've been opening, we're how many? I think nine of our clinics are open or 10. 
Okay. So, but it's a totally different world. We're still doing the 30 minute gap between patients. Okay. And we're doing no walk ins. But now, I, and then now I think we are going to allow walk ins already. We've already mastered the cleaning. So instead of taking 30 minutes, now it takes 10 minutes. We wanted the PPEs, all the, um, you know, the misting, the, what you might call it, um, what do you call those? IntelliPure air filters, but if they really, really work. And so now I think we're ready. So July is supposed to be the real opening already. That And these you protocols know, we're ready. are part of the paper that you created, right? With Well, I was very blessed because I was part of this consensus paper that, that, was, that put together 10 doctors, uh, beauty oh, wow. experts all over the world. So we were 10, we were from Switzerland, Sweden, uh, USA, Australia, um, Korea, Philippines. What else did I forget? So, but it, so we were about nine countries, but 10 doctors. And then we, we put up a protocol on how to open aesthetic clinics again, which is going to be the template for people. Right. But with Bella, we super exaggerated, went over the top. I told Hayden, I'd rather go air in the side of over overacting than be too little. Because yeah, actually the paper only requires that you do TOCC, which is before you come to the clinic, we, we inquire about if you've been out of the country, right, if, right. what's your occupation, who are the people living in your house, have they been exposed to COVID? Then we do the aesthetic questionnaire. But to come in, then you can just have a shield, goggles, and a mask, an N95. Come in. Pass my PPE <laughs> IntelliPure Intelli system because the IntelliPure system is something that's you know that we search for the best uh, filtering system in the world. And NASA had given a grant to this company in the States to do an IntelliPure system, which was supposed to be created for biological warfare. Oh my and god, something by bi biological warfare, something like this. If it ever happens, they will release biological stuff like coronavirus that is so small that the HEPA filter can actually not filter it out. And that was the highest standard before HEPA filter. But it's so small that the HEPA filter doesn't filter it out. So they created this IntelliPure, which is, can filter out seven times smaller viruses than the corona. And yeah. then what we did is instead of having a big one in the lobby, we had one in every room. You know, So the investment has been so big in terms, but we feel that it's what's needed because you know it's a beauty cannot really be a very no touch kind of I know we have facials the doctor exactly. so we just put shields everywhere we put scavenging uh systems to scavenge like the moment the laser is near you it's also you know scavenging the air from the any any what do you call it plumes there's a name for it anyway. It's besides boom. But it's scavengers, so we're all over the place. And then hazmats are necessary just so the patients feel safe. Because I think our biggest problem will be uh, the patients might not. We're all afraid, right? I don't know. Are you of anxious course. at all? I'm a little bit go, uh, yeah, I had so... my back cut, but that's it. <laughs> well, you went to the salon? Yes. But they're all in and they're in. PPE. Oh, the, so what are the patients uh, getting done? What's, the, what's their priority service? Oh, well, first, it's, they all basically want a facial, a cleaning or some okay. sort. A lot of people, you know, you've heard about mask me, right? Yes, from it's you. A new, <laughs> it's a new thing where everybody's breaking out in this part of the face. Because before, usually it's here. I've seen here, it. But I hear because of the mask that they wear. Yeah. So there's a lot. And they, you know, three months of quarantine, they all have things in their faces. But yeah. after that, the thing is, when they finally go out of their house, they usually have a lot of things done because they're already out. I don't, yeah. And uh, what we find very encouraging is that they rebook. So that means when they come to the clinic, they feel safe. In the okay. beginning, they're scared. Then they come to the clinic, they feel safe, right. and then they rebook. So, as he said, we feel very safe here. It's safer here than in our house. <laughs> so, I think we've achieved our thing. There was also a survey that was so interesting. I, I, we didn't send you a picture, but, but what is the first thing you're going to do after quarantine? And yeah. beauty treatments were double 
Of course. Visiting relatives and family. <laughs> Pumangit na lahat. Number, number two was visiting relatives <laughs> and family. And number one was beauty treatments. But of course, this includes haircuts, highlights, yes. you know, going to the to the dermatologist, aesthetic treatment. So I think it, it for me, it was an aha moment because it made me realize that people really need to look good for themselves. It's not because you're going to have a party. Right. It's not because they want other people see people see them. They want to look good. It's they don't feel comfortable if they're right. not looking good. And there are so many patients with bad acne breakouts because they were trying to do, um, do it yourself. facials themselves and yeah. they didn't know how to do it. It became worse. So, so I think, why can't you control? But it gets an adult, but they can't stand looking at the mirror and seeing big pimples. So they bangs try to I tried to cut my own and then disaster. <laughs> why? What happened? Parang naging V shaped. <laughs> oh dear. It's hard <laughs> naman to cut your own, right? I know. I can't even imagine pricking my own pimples, ba? Um, but, but do you get own... pimples? No, no more. Well, sometimes oh. here, I think it's hard. now. But your online consultation still uh, went on, right? During the lockdown. The whole time, yes. Because everybody's freaking out. So actually, we, we put up a Bello shop. Shop Bello, what is it? Or, Med or something. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of people were running out of products because they weren't ready for this lockdown, right? So we were doing very well. He's sending them products. They were happy they could you know, use their products at home. And then in the process, that's what I love about myself. No, <laughs> no I yes, love about yeah. myself that I never stop. I thinking. know. So the whole quarantine, there's not one day I was bored. And I was trying to, I put up all new protocols on how to do things DIY, do it yourself. I call it DIY, bellow it yourself. <laughs> but, you know, suddenly we could do, because I never really got into peeling. I don't really like chemical peels. But I didn't realize if you put the zero products, they're not chemicals, but they're natural agents like the glycolic, but at a certain twice a day together with retinol, then you will get a peeling that's nice and even. I didn't like peeling before because when you say peeling to me, I used to think Agad Beauty Parlor, Alamion, and then when they do that peeling of the whole body and then malaking, you know, parang I, I, I don't like it because it's so unpredictable. Peeling usually is unpredictable. You don't know how deep your chemical will go. It depends on the thickness of the skin, on the color of the skin, the pores. It's so non-scientific. It's not the same results all the time. But with more natural ingredients, we were getting great results. And, you know, like people who are the Jess Wilson, Panic, uh, who else? Um, parang, sino po naman nagpapanic na tumawag sa akin? Uh, Camille ko. My God, she got two pimples. I mean, it looked like five pimples in a row altogether. Because she pricked one, it became three, then it became five per side of her face. Si Camille ko. Uh, sino pa? Si Kim. Kim, but there are so many people calling me, look wow. at my face. So I was doing, so that's another thing. We realized, okay, pala tong Zoom consultation. Na to. <laughs> so, uh, you know, these things that I never did before, right? Because I like person right. to person. But I said, oh, pala, because I can see better, I can concentrate better. And when they get to the clinic, there's no more. Because one thing that's new in Bello that I find very strange when I go, I'm so used to many people being at Bello. But now when I go to Bello, there's never anybody in the waiting area. Should There should be none. Right. If we did our job right, the moment you arrive, you go straight to your treatment. So by doing a consultation online before you go, then we already have the whole thing planned. And when right. you arrive, it's very efficient. And maybe you can get more. Kasi more in one. Travel time, more appointments by Zoom. <laughs> I know. I was thinking, because we can send them the products. A lot of our patients are 50 and above. They still don't want to go to the clinic. Oh. So they're calling me and I could tell them and then I check on them after three days. Oh, you're doing it right. Show me what you're doing. So they feel really good because they're able to do it at home and they're still able to look good without having to go to the clinic and I discovered so because Zio Zain Abaji I know you have you heard of Abaji from before of course before? who has not so Dr. Abaji is my rock star you know like if you have an idol let's say your rock star is Barbara Streisand or somebody your singer for me that's Dr. Zain Abaji in dermatology because he was the first doctor to think of skin health 
prior to Dr. Abaji, dermatologists, you go to them when you're sick. So yeah. if you have pimples, if you have an an, if you have eczema, psoriasis, you never went to them for beauty. That was not what they were meant for. But Dr. Abaji felt his state, his why, why did he become a dermatologist is to keep people's skin healthy all their lives. And so he started talking about skin health, skin health. And now we owe everything that's been since then that people go for maintenance, looking beautiful to their derma, to him. So he created products that were done to keep you healthy, skin healthy, to exercise your skin cells. So it's all about working out the skin cells because you can work out your body, but how are you going to work out your skin? Right. So he invented products that, you know, so, so that the skin changes quickly. So you're always baby smooth. There's no dead skin patong patong, and then you don't have pimples. So he defines uh, ideal skin, healthy skin as like a baby. So Scarlett has the best skin, right? right. So it's same color, it's smooth, there are no pimples, no pigmentation, it's collagen, it's healthy. So that's how he defines it. And he feels that we can keep that sort of skin all our lives, that it doesn't have to be wrinkly and old when you get ugly. So in a way, he's a David Sinclair of skin. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, so I'm that's why. So the skin of Bray, Bray Cabrera, your uh, uh -huh. marketing manager. I've seen her Obaji skin and I'm so impressed. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I used to have, because I used to just have one, but I know, 10 products that I combine. He has like 50, but now I went, at least during quarantine, I was able to discover another 10 that were wonderful. Because I was, and then when you combine it, like hydroquinone for pigmentation, that's a very big problem for Filipinos. So melasma, it would just be hydroquinone. But now we discovered nine hydroquinone products that really work under the ZO line. So for people who don't like hydroquinone, at least there's a very good alternative. So Happy to naman ako. So, I, you know, I think what keeps me excited is when I discover new things or new uses for things that I used to, you know, that I already have, but then I've been able to combine them. I feel like a white witch, you know, trying to make skin better by figuring so out. How many steps is your uh, beauty routine at night? Me, it's not, it's not, actually, it's three to four, it's four steps in the morning and four steps at oh, night. Oh, okay. So I'm not a Korean girl. Yeah, you 20 know, steps. It, <laughs> grabe. <laughs> Korean skin, those 10 steps or 20 steps is really good for dry skin. But oh. for Filipino skin that tends to be on the oilier side, a lot of people will actually break out on all those rich creams because you have to remember that Korea is cold, right? right? And they're not so humid. And so the, the products that work in Korea don't translate well here. Right. Although Bello is really into Korean beauty, we are into Korean skin. So for example, I always advise people to eat kimchi. Yeah. Because I know now. You know, <laughs> no, it's not even probiotics. It's actually microbiome already. So probiotics and prebiotics are things that help you make microbiome. But there, the kimchi is fermented food, so it already has a lot of good bacteria. So you're actually taking the good bacteria in already. And what made me turn around talaga was two years ago when Crystal gave birth. I've been into microbiome a long time, a long, long time, because it's, it's really where health is going. I don't know where it's a little slow, but definitely microbiome will be what everybody's talking about in two or three years. So... Of our cells, 90% of our cells are in our, in our gut and oh, it's so. good bacteria. And it's almost like a brain. It controls, it's been able, if you have good bacteria, it's been able to cure Alzheimer's. It's been able to cure uh, so many diseases, strokes, et cetera. Um, what's right. the one with kids? Autism. Can you imagine right. they've been able to do that? But the way they did, it, they do it in Europe is it's so gross, but it really works. Fecal transplant. Fecal transplant, <laughs> exactly. So they get fe feces from very amazing superhuman beings. You know, people from Eastern European countries who are perfect in face, perfect in skin, very healthy. You know, and the, in Estonia, Slovenia, and then they get this this fecal material, and then they take out all the feces to be fair and then they give you all the bacteria and they stick it up your butt 
and I've gone through it. Are you going to really do it? Made oh, me you have? healthy. Yes, oh I've tried it, but I can't do it in the Philippines because we don't have good uh, people, donors. Uh, our food is dirty. Oh. Our air is dirty. So we can't, even if you get it from young people, it won't be good. Oh, you sad. really have to do it. And even if I were to bring, let's say, um, people from Slovenia, 28, they have to be beautiful. Pa. And then they have to be happy pa, because it affects your mood. <laughs> even if you bring them here after a while of living here, like two months, they'll have the same uh, environment. You already. bring them here and make them poop for you. <laughs> <laughs> Poop. exactly you collect but it's so it's harder to be a poop donor than it is to get into harvard like 10 times harder it's really that i know but so sure that's the thing constantly. but you can you can approximate it like 70 percent of it by eating fermented food so what are fermented food kombucha kombucha, yeah. ba? kombucha, kombucha. kimchi and yeah. sauerkraut so, so I don't like kombucha. So I said sauerkraut. Yeah. Are you going to sell it? No, Bello well, I, you know, I wish. But, but I don't want to get... There's too many things. I'm not that entrepreneurial. Anyway. No, so my do Dr. Manahan, who is the obstetrician of Crystal, he told me, you know, I was there when Crystal gave birth to um, my first apo, Diva Hunter. And I was there and I... And he, and he said, you know, you should see the intestines. You should see the, the fibrous tissue of the Koreans when I opened them. Because it's a science. Wow. I said, why? He goes, you know, their skin is not just beautiful on their face. Even their insides are oh beautiful. Ibang klaser, ha? Yung mga uterus or whatever. I said, I said oh, so why it's really because they eat kimchi? <laughs> so I said, for this, and the way they heal, it's so amazing. So I said, oh, Good so that's why dog. now everybody eat kimchi three times okay. a day. I'm going to ask you later where you buy your kimchi, but you're always ahead talaga, of technology and procedures. Yeah. How, how do you get into that mindset of always being one step ahead to know what the market needs and always responding to what they need? How do I you think, what do I do? Best. I'm very curious. I'm extremely curious. I mean, and when I get into anything, I have to be the best. It's like, it's like I have to try to be the best. I'm I not saying I'm the best. best, but I won't stop. Like whatever trip I'm in, wherever I go, let's say we went to Africa for a safari. I will always do three days first where I'll visit the top dermatologist in that country. Oh, okay. Or, you know, if I go to Brazil, I went to Brazil, I visited the top. But then I go all over the world, but it has, it's always a combined vacation. And research. And, and research. And I don't stop reading. I keep reading. That's why... Hey, well, whatever is in, I'm reading about mitochondria now. I'm reading, reading about lifespan, which is really not part of right. dermatology. But I feel like if you're going to treat a person and make them young, they have to feel young. They have to look young. And, you know, a lot of it is also great because as I age, things are for me. Right. <laughs> so it's a very personal, <laughs> it's a very personal search. So, I mean, you know, that I was fat and then. And when I finally lost the weight, I was pimply. So finally, I got the skin down. I got wrinkly. <laughs> so all these things. And, you know, I like, for example, I knew thing, the hair tech MD. People have been asking me for a really long time, do you have anything that will make white hair black? I and saw I really your thought face. about <laughs> yeah, and I'm thinking, that's not I possible. <laughs> possible. I never thought it was. Still, but we kept searching, of course, and finally found this invention by a um, Israeli doctor, but produced by an Italian company that claimed that they, they have proof. They do show proof white hair can become black just by using decapeptides, peptides. But I didn't believe it because and then luckily for me, now I have white hair. So I said, okay, I'll try it first. And perfect timing. I started trying it during quarantine. It worked. So three months of no highlighting, no nothing. I got stuck. It works. I showed so it. Now that is, I didn't, did you see it? I saw it. That's because, okay, you grow one centimeter of hair per month if you're healthy. So I grew one centimeter. So I have now more or less one and a half inch of growth. So I have this white hair. I showed it in the video. Guys, please follow me and Victoria underscore Bello. That's my <laughs> IG. Yeah, me plugging. So I have white hair, gray hair, and then one and a half inch of black hair. 
It wow. really works. I'm so <laughs> wow. I that's why I was so excited because I didn't really think it would work. But I wasn't pushing it because I need to know. It's always personal experience. So I did this. And then we, when I saw the hair, it's so clear because it's white hair that became black. Talaga. And then I'm so excited because there are three things in Derma that I've been trying to uh, find a cure for. One is stretch marks. And we I don't have 100% cure, but I have a 90% cure. Keloids, which I also have a 90% cure. I wouldn't say it's going to go back to normal, but at least it won't be keloidal anymore. And gray hair or white hair, can it become black? So at least now, down one. I only have two left. <laughs> yeah. So yay. I have all those. So <laughs> yeah, keloids. I'm sure you don't. People always say they have keloids. And well, I look at the keloids. From mosquito bites. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, that's easy now. That we already uh-huh. have a cure for. Keloids are, are scars that, kunyari, you have a pimple in your chest. And then when the scar grows, it's much bigger than the pimple size. And then it's red and it's raised and it's itchy and it keeps growing. That's the keloid. If oh. you just have a mark where your pimple used oh, to that's be, that's just that's a not a keloid. Okay. Yes, that one we can fix already easily. Okay. So what else it's are you It's a keloid looking? that's crazy. Your hmm. latest uh, services and procedures. How's the third? Or we have, well, the new thing we're excited about. Are you frozen? Okay. Oh, am I frozen? Hi. Thermiva. Flower arrangement. Okay, you're back to now. <laughs> okay, so now. So if you're beautiful up here, you have to be beautiful down there. Diba? Parang ugly naman ni Lukiang. Tapos when they go down there, yeah, it's so really and old. So we have so many things down there and it's so exciting. So down there, first we have Thermiva. So Thermiva is a machine that tightens your vagina. So if you've been giving birth or if you're getting old, because one of the reasons your vagina gets loose is that the, the tissue, the shelf, because you're, you're like if you are the type that suddenly now when you cough or when you run or when you laugh, there's a little wee-wee that comes out. That's because your shelf is no longer thick. It gets thin, like your face, like collagen. So when you cough, your urinary bladder opens a bit and some wee goes out. So we need to tighten that. We need to make your vagina, if you've given birth, we need to shrink it and create more collagen so it's makapal. But Dr. Vagina was here last October and he taught me all these things I've been wanting to learn. So three years ago, I saw Kim Kardashian kept talking and saying, thank you. For this O injection, oh my gosh, it's the best thing I've in the G spot injection. I kept going around the world asking all my friends and doctors, do you know the G spot injection? Do you know the O injections are always for orgasm? G spot is for G spot orgasm. So always more outside for the clitoris. G spot is inside for the vagina. Nobody knew. I was going to the wrong people. Dr. Vagina came here. He's, he's known name? as Dr. Vagina. His name, what is his name? Dr. Bar, but I have it in my blog. Bar, no, he'll kill me. Uh, what is, Gaspar, anyway. Dr. Gaspar. Doctor. So I was with Tessa and me. So, obstetrician pa lang dapat pinanap ko. So, this Dr. Gaspar, he created the vaginal G-spot. So, a G-spot is really a spot. Yes. The problem is, the sometimes you don't hit spot. the spot. Yes. Yeah, but it's too small. Eh? So if the person, the guy is too small or you're too loose or something, hindi mo ma get yung spot. So what he decided to do is make it a big rectangle instead of you a mean spot. Expand the spot. Expand, expand, expand <laughs> the spot. So it became, becomes a rectangle. He did that by doing fillers lang in wow. the area. And then now, when you go there, parang may ano rugue or parang rough, rough things. So it's almost a rough for both because the guy also feels more friction and a different kind of uh, roughness. Not roughness, but just a surface that's kind of like more, you know, na oong kit. And then the girl, the man, she becomes tighter and so she can, and the G sp- spot is expanded so she can have more orgasms. Then on the clitoris, what he did is he got PRP platelet-rich plasma, which you get as a vampire face for the face. And then they put it around the clitoris to make the clitoris also bigger. 
Huh? So, ngayon, kasi sometimes, guys, they have a hard time finding it, nawawala sila. Or sometimes, it's so small. <laughs> Hindi nila maano. So, now it's bigger. So, yeah. So, now, you look more beautiful because it's flower arrangement outside, non-surgical with your Neva. Inside, you get tighter. Then, you don't you don't have any more the urinary incontinence, the wee-wee coming out. And then, you have the filler to make it more masarap for you and your partner. And then, you have the clitoris, the O spot, the O shot to make you come worse. So on the, on the exterior, the clitoris actually looks bigger? No, naman. Because it's no, not that big naman when they put well, it. But, yeah, you know, it's about, because the clitoris is about this big. Yeah. So you make it double, so it's still that big. It doesn't it's look small. like a penis. Actually, the clitoris is the miniature penis. Yeah. Yes, you know, yes. it didn't grow. So we have right. that. But then, the, what happens when you age as well, the vulva, which is the flower that covers it, Diba when you're young, it's a bud. And then when you're mga, after one baby, it becomes a little of a rose that's already ripe. And then if you have many babies or you're old, it becomes already withered. So we can't oh. try to keep it to the bud or to the blooming rose. So that's <laughs> So no need to do Kegel exercises if you do this. Yes, the Kegel <laughs> exercise. Actually, it's still good to do it, but it's so nakakapagod. Have you tried some yes. I remember if I remember. <laughs> I do. It's so not it's so tiring because if you don't do it three times a week, like you work out your body, now yung tone. It's not like you keep I know, but I think it's good to exercise because you know, papa no me hold, release, hold, release, hold, 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 hold. <laughs> Diba para mano. You have to so stay of course, on. since you try all your machines, you tried this oh. all. Of course, of always course. try first. For the benefit of science. And I really <laughs> won't sell you anything. I cannot talk as if from, from an experience that I don't have. We have a new machine that Hayden doesn't want me to discuss, but I will. Because this is really not, not kasama for, it's for men naman. So now, when you go to conventions of, for example, I came from Paris and we attended IMCAS Paris. Half the talks are all about vagina and the penis, and half the talks are all about rejuvenation of the face and body. For some reason, that has now fallen under under aesthetic doctors. Wow. So with this one, Aman, it's already a lot of making the penis. Uh, so when they're young, they're so excited. I get a lot of questions from men who are only in their 30s or even 28 now come. I'm not as excited as when I was 18. How come I'm not as hard as when I was 18? So it's all about fight. It's all about plumbing. If you really uh, study the male thing, there's no muscles there. It's all, you know, columns of blood. And when you get excited, it stands. When you get, I know, it, it softens. But also as you get older, your blood circulation isn't as strong. Okay. And, you know, so sometimes it's not as hard. And of course, for a lot of women, if you ask them what is more important to you, is it length or girth? Most people will say, women will say it's the girth, right? right. So, because we only really have three inches. So this crazy notion that we want a long one, it's actually quite painful for right. people who experience. But I will not say if I've experienced personal, but, anyway. <laughs> but the girth, the girth is what's important, right? Para but when it comes out, it's may sunkit sunkit. So there, there's now a new machine that really works on this problem. So I told Hayden I want to do it. But he, I said, you have to come and practice again because Hayden's more on the operation side in marketing. He said, I don't want to do this. It's not a machine that I think Bello should have. I said, but Sia, because you have already the Thermiba and the Ano, of course, you also have to help the guy, diba? Anyway, we're still arguing about this. So, so for you guys who don't know. <laughs> Diba? It would be nice. Kaya lang baka mahiya lalo. But so we have it usually in the ninth floor in medical class. Uh, the quiet clinic where there's nobody because it's for surgery only. So that's where the that's where the vagina things are. That's where the guy things are. So, you know, parang when you go there, ah, magpapalight ko or magpapanos or mag-ewan. I don't know. So everything, but, diba, everything that you offer, you've tried. Yeah, except the male thing, obviously. The I male. can't say naman, everything, everything. But I would say 99%. Some naman I really don't need, so I won't do it. But I'll be there when somebody else is trying, and I'll really do the consult. And I mean, like, oh, what does it feel like? Oh, what do you think? <laughs> diba? 
<laughs> you, you haven't been to Belo. Have you? I'll, I'll go, I'll go. Promise. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, soon, huh? Oh. 30 years ago, things were very different, right? You mentioned often that in the beginning, when you tried to blaze trails or introduce new things, you were ridiculed by your contemporaries. Yes. That what was, was so it like in those days? It was extremely, what was it? I think in a way it was depressing and it was... Because when you're, you, at least for me, being a doctor was such a dream. And I worked really, really hard to become one. It wasn't easy for me because I, you know, I'm, I kind of didn't. It takes so much work in terms of studying. And then you have to go on duty path. And the duty thing I'm really not used to. This, because my parents, I was an only child. So basically they made me stay home. I never was allowed to sleep out. And suddenly now I had to sleep in the hospital you know 20 you go on 36 hour duty right and then I had to push I remember it was so traumatic for me because I'd have to push the gurneys myself I'd have to wipe shit from people because if they had a stroke in the market and my first patient had had a stroke in the market and you know to sticky shit all over and I just given birth to crystal like three weeks before I was still in my maternity dress and I was wiping um you know, tired, and I'm not used to, or the next patient, the one I had that night at one in the morning, I remember 16 year old boy with meningitis, brain meningitis, and he came in and, and, you know, so they're saying, what is your differential diagnosis? I said, oh, meningitis, which kind, bacterial, viral. I said, I said, I think it's tuberculosis. And then they said, okay, what are your tests? There's this test called the Cornelius maneuver, where you, you just bend the neck and if it's tuberculosis, they will vomit, right? So I'm tanga ko. I mean, I know it, but I I did it. But I so he vomited on me all the all wow. the TV. But, but it was so hard. It was really hard for me. And I'm not used to being away. I had to study abroad. It was just so hard for me. And I thought, well, I'm making the sacrifice because I'm going. I had this dream of making the Philippines um, first world in my depart in my in my circle of influence, because I, I used to feel bad. I studied abroad a lot and people would think, I Philippines, oh, you still live on trees. Oh, you do. You know, they really had a very um, right. low opinion of us. And I, you know, I think it teaches you to be nationalistic, to fight for your country. So I said, I'm going to make the, you know, I'm going to make the Philippines a go-to destination when it comes to beauty and surgery. And then I studied also in Thailand and I went to Harvard for lasers, but in Thailand, I, I looked at them and I thought, we're just the same, basically. I mean, in school, the Filipinos actually top, we were three, the Filipinos stopped the dermatology program and the ties were next. So for sure, because you speak English so well and our, and our professors were from Australia and England and Japan, it was an English course. So of course, the Filipinos had an easier time. So I because we're so good. Why is it that we can't seem, why is Thailand so admired and and, you know, and it's a really big, actually, advantage of small hands because you can do finer work. And our cultures are the same in the sense that mahilig tayo so small things. Anyway, so I really wanted to do it. But when I came home, all these people were so helpful to me. I studied with the best people abroad because I would just make pa cute. Like, I'm from the Philippines, a third world country. I'm no threat to them. And they would really be so willing to teach me everything they knew. So when I came back here and I, I really had decided early on that I wouldn't be a dermatologist general per se because I, there's so many diseases you can't do anything about like lupus or psoriasis or mycosis fungoides. Bulus pemphigoid. I mean, they're so frustrating. And I wanted to be a doctor that made a difference in a person's life. I said, I'll just do aesthetics because that was, you know, it made a difference in my life. I felt happier. I was more confident because I looked better. So I just wanted to give this gift to other people. And when I did it, everybody's like, why is she doing surgery? She's only a dermatologist. Why is she doing lasers? It might burn, you know, burn the brains of the patients. It was that. And then because I studied abroad and the marketing in beauty, the beauty doctor industry, they really would market. When I got back here, I started doing PR. 
So I was doing a lot of PR. But for the doctors then, they thought it was advertising. They don't seem, there was a thin line and they didn't know the difference. Me naman, in my head, I'm just educating, you know, trying to get the word across that there's a doctor in town who's about beauty only, has lasers, introduced the first lasers in the Philippines, uh, a new kind of liposuction, it's outpatient. Because prior to, to the tumescent liposuction, liposuction was under general anesthesia in the hospital and had to be, you had to have blood transfusions after. It was a major surgery. This one is a walk-in, walk-out. You can go to the mall 30 minutes after you're done. So that was the kind of environment I went in and I was getting so much flack um, from other people, other doctors. So yeah. it was painful because who didn't understand what I was doing because it was just so new. So looking back at it now, when everybody's actually doing what I did 30 years ago, right? But um, aren't you guys gonna apologize? You gave me such a <laughs> and now oh, you're all doing it. How bad did it get? Like how bad did the ridicule? Get? It I uh, know it got to the point where I got scared because you know, parang I'm not. I was breaking rules, though. Parang you know, but there's just so much negativity and I wasn't used to that so I stopped and I prayed I you know luckily for me I have I'm always very prayerful and I always you know always ask God if I'm doing the right thing wrong thing etc so at that time I prayed and I said Lord am I really doing something wrong there's just so much noise around me there must be you know I didn't think I was but maybe I'm wrong so can you please tell me if I'm doing something wrong I said because I'm just trying to introduce new things to the to this country new lasers, you know, for birthmarks, for, and also that there's no scars, and, and, and so please give me a sign, Lord. So I remember so clearly. Um, so I prayed, let's say, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, when I got to work, they brought me a, uh, a girl came in, a 19-year-old girl, a student. She was uh, enrolling in UST. Very pretty, nice skin, no pimple, not one sexy so, and I said oh, what can I do for you but I couldn't understand why she was there and she said she rolled up her sleeve and she showed me a keloid as big as a uh what tennis ball golf ball I said oh my gosh what happened to you she said you know I was enrolling in USD I had a little tattoo on my shoulder a small one and angel on my shoulder and they said you can't enroll in USD if you have a tattoo so my conservative school so she she went to a dermatologist and asked what I, she could do to remove it. And the dermatologist told her, I can my, derm, I know, microdermabrate, no, dermabrasion is off. That was the old treatment for scars. So he did that, but on the shoulder, it's a very movable area and you can create more scar when you move. So naging kilo this big. And when it was that big already, they said, oh, you should have gone to Dr. Bell and laser shot. So she went to me now, but I said, you know, I don't, as I told you, keloid, I, I only found a cure for keloid like three years ago. I said, I can't do anything anymore. But if you had come to me from the beginning, I'd have the two laser, remove a laser that wouldn't have scarred you. And she goes, but no, I can't do anything anymore. So I felt so bad. And I said, see, if I don't do PR and if I don't inform people, then nobody knows. And then they'll do other older procedures. And then, but I said, God, was that a sign? But I'm not sure yet. One more sign, Lord, one more sign. <laughs> so two days later, I, the baby naman arrived. So a baby, so cute, one year old. Now. One side of the face was so cute. The other side was so deformed. You know, parang like that, the eye was closed. Or so, I, know. I said, what happened here? And they told me, oh, she was born with a birthmark, a hemangioma that was becoming big and was covering her eye so that it, it closed. And if she doesn't use that eye, then she'll become blind. So they went to a surgeon and they removed the tumor and then they got skin from the neck and transpositioned it to cover the hole in the eye. And that's why her face was all like that. And then now can I do anything to make her look normal? I said, you know, again, it was too late. I said, if you had come to me, I have a vascular laser to remove blood vessels, which is what a hematoma is. But now that you've already transpositioned the, the skin from the neck, then it's, I can't undo that. I mean, it's already, and you took out already the blood vessel tumor. I can't do anything anymore. But that was when it became very clear to me that, you know, you are here. It was for me, it was clear sign. I'm here for the patients and not really here to make other doctors happy. And as long as I know I could have helped these people if I had done more PR, but I had stopped because I was scared. 
So I said, I from now on, I'll just go forward. Like a horse. I'm not doing anything wrong. Like a, I always like say, horse with blinders. blinders. Because if you pay attention to what everybody's saying, then, then it, you know, I, I'm, that's why I don't even read so much comments on my IG, for example, because I get depressed if one person would say something bad to me, even if like, there's a hundred people who said something good to me. But I get, it stays in my head. So I said, it's not, I just tell my, you know, they'll tell me what the good stuff is, but I, then they'll, they'll tell me in a gentle way what the bad stuff is if I need to know. But, parang, you know, I really feel it's worth for me that I, I only consult with the Lord and the people who love me and want what's right. best for me. And I don't listen to everybody and their own opinion. As they say, everybody, if you listen to everybody, they all have an opinion, so you'll go crazy, right? Because they all see you differently. So you just have to know the truth inside you. So you knew early on that you wanted to be a dermatologist, like when you were 11? <laughs> well, not, well, what happened was at five years old, I know you've heard this story. Yes, years, yes. But I, but I will tell it again. Maybe some people haven't heard yes. it. So when I, I was an adopted child. I was adopted by my mother's sister. And we studied in Assumption. So we're all in the same school. My mom, my biological mom told my sisters, oh, she's your sister. You always say she's your sister. So, but our names were different. I'm Belo, they're Cancho. So in school, they were more senior and we always say, hi, that's our sister. So everybody started wondering how can she be your sister? Her name's Belo, your sister Cancho, blah, blah. And then oh, she got adopted. And at that time, there was a stigma about adoption. I could always hear people say, I am pon lang siya. I am pon lang yan, pinamigay, whatever. Then when I was then my classmate would say to me, why did they give you away? Is it because you're ugly? <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then the other kid would say, why did they know they gave her away? Because she's so fat. So, you know, at five years old, it really stays in your brain. You have no filter. So then I started to cry. But then I, re- I said, so that's why pala I was adopted because I'm fat and ugly. Pinamigay ako. Sorry, it was a bad thing, right? Pinamigay ka. Because I have three sisters. So why will they give me away? I'm still a girl. Right? Anyway. So after that, I said, ah, so if you're fat and you're ugly, people won't love you. They'll give you away. So at that time, at five years old, I'd already made up my mind. I'm going to make people beautiful. I'll make them sexy and pretty. So they won't be given away. But I had no idea how. So onwards, six years, I'm 11. I got my period. I had so many pimples. Pimples I would go to all the doctors. My poor dad spent so much money. But at that time, they could only do was all they did was prick, 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 acne astringent, and whatever. Next week, you have a lot again, prick, 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 prick. So I never got better. And then there were such few dermatologists that I would just sit in their waiting room for hours, just waiting for my turn to be cleaned. And then while I'm there, I had my little notebook. This is what you people who want to be successful. You bring a notebook or your phone. You write down all your ideas and just glow into your head the whole day. And so, and then you read it at night to see if it makes sense. But just whatever impresses you, you just write it down. So I would say, I, maybe I should be a derma. I hate waiting here. And then, you know, they're not curing me. I have to cure myself. And okay, then I hated going there because plastic flowers, white lights were so harsh, old magazines. I know when I have a clinic, bago magazines, beautiful. I know, meron ako malistahan what I was going to do. So I think you know, yeah, you try. I started planning it. Then when I got into dermatology. I said, oh my gosh, there's so many diseases, but I can't cure. Because at that time, dermatology 30 years ago was clinical. So it was mostly lang, you know, skin diseases. allergic contacts, skin diseases. I said, I don't like this. But you know, I studied in Thailand for my last year. I got last month of that, that one year course, lasers. I said, I, I like this. Because you really remove things. And it's high tech, lights, zoom, zoom, buzz, buzz. I liked it. So I went to Harvard to study more about lasers. And I, then in Harvard, I met so many dermatologists who were doing surgery. I said, well, we can do, we're surgical specialty. Pala. That's new. That wasn't happening here. So I learned liposuction from the creator of the liposuction, Dr. Jeffrey Klein. And I went to um, San Diego. I took a course on dermatologic surgery. Then I came home with this brand new stuff, right? 
And that's the beginning of this whole, ano, at that time, they didn't think, you know, they kept saying, she's a doctor? What kind of doctor is she? To begin with, I don't look like one. I don't talk like one. So, parang, then I was teaching pa aerobics. So, parang, anong class yung <laughs> Secondly, I had lasers and people were scared of them because, you know, they never heard of it. And then liposuction, wow. How come she's a derma? She's doing lipo. But, you know, fat is the third layer of skin. So, the way medicine is divided, as long as it's still in your purview, like, Epidermis, dermis, fat, that's still under, under derma. So, pwede rin ako mag-liposuction, health transplants. So, that's how it started. And, you know, it was hard work in the beginning, but, you know, I'm really glad I went through it. Puti na lang, I have the most wonderful parents. My parents are so supportive. There's nothing I can do wrong. So, they would say, Iha, go ahead. They'll buy me my lasers. Can you imagine? But to be to be ano naman, proud, they bought me my first two lasers. So just to show you, Mirs, I didn't think I'll be successful. I was in Thailand. They called me. Yeah, there's a new building coming up. We want to buy your clinic. How many square meters do you want? It's 20 square meters per per cut. So we're thinking we'll buy you this medical plaza. Medical plaza. I said, um, 140 is too big. Can you just buy me 20? And I said, what? Why? I said, because if it's 20, but see, I already, be a psychology because it was my uh, pre-med in UP. If you buy me 20 square meters, if there's one patient in my waiting room, it looks full. But if you buy me 140 square meters, one patient in my waiting room looks so empty. And I don't <laughs> want people, you don't want to go to an empty restaurant, right? right? You don't want to go to an empty clinic because it means I, nobody goes to her. So we agreed on 40 square meters. So we bought 40 square meters. No, it's medical towers, but we bought 40 yeah, yeah. square meters. And then I had to rent everything along on the floor because it was just doing... The, but I said, Daddy, can you buy me my lasers? Even at that time, a laser was $150,000. It's still the same today. So he bought me two lasers, so that's $300,000. And so I had a 40 square meter small clinic, but with this $300,000 laser. And then from then on, man, God is so good. That's why this time has been very scary for me because there's never been a point in my life where I didn't have a profit already. So within two weeks of starting my clinic, I had lots of patients now. I never went wow. through, well, I'm patient. You're going to build up your practice. I don't know how. So when people tell me, how did you build up your practice? I said, God built it up for me. I just, even before, before I put my sign on the door, I already had a lot of patients. So you were Regine Velasquez. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She was your first She celebrity. was my first celebrity. And she went in. I didn't have a sign on my door. It was it was that. that uh, no. So during this uh, quarantine, when I had no income at all, it was a very scary time for me because it was all out. Money was just going out because we supported our our um, employees. Uh, first month was work, no work was this, would pay. What was the most difficult time for your company? For, I think this is probably it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's we're not we're limiting our patients because we don't know we're still trying to be as safe as possible. So we're gradually, you know, seeing how things are. And of course, I have six hundred employees now. It's it's so much more different than when I had we were six, you know, in our little 40, 40, square, 40 square meter office were six, so that's so easy to handle. Right. And then, you know, the the I mean, parang we're not, it's scary COVID. The corona is still out there. There's no yes. vaccine. There's no cure. So it's just such a new world. I'm trying to be a futurologist. like trying to figure out because there's no precedence for this, right? right? So you really have to imagine this future. That's a no. But I, in a way, it's good because it's exercising my brain. And right. it's nice to have a partner like Hayden because he's also a doctor and he's also so aware. And we've, we've been together for 15 years and his strengths are my weaknesses. So he's very organized, very forward thinking, very logical. And I'm kind of on the emotional side. So, you know, he, he he makes things much better and organized. I can get the brilliant idea, but he will temper it to make it more realistic. So it's, but this is really the hardest time I've ever had because it's, it's just so uncertain. And it's yeah, your 30th year, right? Oh, my, what a celebration, my 30th year. <laughs> Sabi nila, can we forget 2020? <laughs> What's a joke? What's phone? 
yung celebration. Postpone na lang. Postpone. But then, when you look back, besides God, <laughs> what do you think are the top... Oh, that's the best partner, God. Top I three, you guys. Of course, top three reasons or traits that you have that have kept you on top for 30 years. Well, I for 30 years, I've been... I'm, well, I only started, you know, this, first of all, you have to have a bigger dream than I did because my dream was very small. Fun. I mean, in a way, my biggest dream was to be successful by 40. How shallow was that? And so, but I was just thinking about it. At 40, I think I was successful already. You were because I think about Cosmo. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love you. That's why I love Mirza. You know, Mirza and I were on the plane together and she said, yes. you know, she you're the perfect life Cosmo story. woman. <laughs> yes, and she said, you're fun. And you're, you're fun. Female. You're female. So I, I want to put you as the right cosmo woman. Ako naman, kilig na kilig. Thank you. Yes, I would love to be ganyan. Then later on, nag-interview na si, si Mirza, nag-pictorial na at lahat. And then she says, by the way, how old are you? And I said, I'm 40. I think I was 47. And he said, oh my gosh. I said, why? Uh, fun fearless female has to be less than 40 or 40 at the most. <laughs> I said, wow, you really think I'm less than 40? I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's it. One, I'm, I'm, I'm not fearless. Even if I'm afraid, go pa rin ako. Diba? Okay. So I'm courageous. That's what I think. Um, number two, I'm really, I'm a passionate learner. I'm passionate about everything I do. There's no middle ground. So, if I'm going to do this, I'll go all the way. I'll do everything. So it doesn't, it doesn't, I know, it doesn't. And when I'm very. Say, when you say what? go all the way, what do you mean? Like in terms like of. Like if I'm going to be this, like if I wanted to be an aesthetic dermatologist and be the best in the world, I have to travel the world. I have to, I have to visit. Because I, I knew already early on that, that I was at a disadvantage because I lived in the Philippines. And so I tried to figure out, okay, so. I'm not, I don't have the kind of money to invent things. I can't really, I know. So what can I do to make my clinic the best clinic it could possibly be? And then I, from my travels, I learned early on that, uh, you know, the ego of doctors is kind of big for people who are very successful. And they think that they're the best. So they'll never learn. They never learn from anybody else. Like they'll create their own in, you know, invention, but nobody has a monopoly on genius. So I take advantage of the geniuses and I visit their clinics and I learn and I get all their knowledge. And then what I decided to do is just put them all together in one clinic, a one-stop shop for beauty. So when you go to the Bella Medical Group, the reason people fly, used to fly here when there was no corona, from the States, can you imagine those five? fly in from New York, they're flying from Beverly Hills, they're flying from the Middle East, Hong Kong, get people come in all the time just for the day. Morning, they'll come on cafe, leave at seven in the evening, they just stayed in the clinic the whole day because they always said, we can't find everything like this in any other clinic. It's only your clinic that has the best of Europe, the best of Brazil, the best of Korea, the best of the US, Japan, you know, because I did that. So that's it. I'm like, Okay, I always manage to see when there's a weakness or there's a flaw, I, I figure out how to make it a strength. And since I was sort of wrong, I wasn't a threat to anyone. People were very open in their offices. Of, you know, And I learned very quickly and I'm so observant. So I think that's also been traits that have helped me a lot. Diba? And I don't have an ego like, okay, I got that from there. Okay, la, because... I really, you know, and then I love to play with things. So I never, I'm never, it's exciting for me to keep abreast because I need, I get excited. I get bored. Like if I do the same thing over and over again, I get bored. So I always have to look for something new, something that works. And then I'm matapag to try things on myself. I always thank God. God, thank you that I still look like a normal human being because <laughs> so, you know, there was one time I really almost made, because one, one of the ways I enter an office is to try the procedure with, let's say, fat grafting was new in two, 1990, no, 2000, 2000, 20 years ago, fat grafting. The guy who invented fat grafting was Pierre Fournier. He's a French uh, obstetrician, actually. But he invented, put the fat on the face. And I really wanted to learn it. So I went to him. I pretended to be a patient. And while he was doing me, 
I started telling him I'm a derma. I want to learn design because by this time you have a relationship. <clears throat> but my taste became as big as a Inca. <laughs> my tita in Paris was freaking out. Biki, what did you do? You did it this time. You really did it this time. You're so ugly. <laughs> I said, no, 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 Tita, don't worry. The fat melts. You know, not everything takes. Only 50% will take. So this will go down. It didn't go down. I, it really took, I think, 90% of the fat that was transplanted oh from somewhere God. took in my taste. So for about, I think, six months, I looked awful, really six bad. Months. And I was like, oh, my gosh, Lord, I, what will I do? I don't have a lot of hair, I cannot do it that way. So we figured out how to liposuction the face. Oh, my God. So, you know, it's like, okay, me and Dr. Busa, I said, Eloy, we've got to take this fat out. I cannot go around looking like this. So I said, so I had to do it for a week because, you know, normally you sedate, you know, twilight lang pa yung bangag bangag, so you don't feel pain. But I said, now I have to see what you're doing because it was the first time for both of us and when you liposuction the face normally it's here you know maybe a little in the cheeks here but i had to lipo every single part of my face so i said and i didn't want to wake up and be surprised that i don't like the results so we put the mess in anesthesia and then i and i really had to direct my own lipo oh here oh, my God. oh there oh there oh okay stop <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm fearless. But, you know, thank God, it came out okay. Yeah, that's what I mean about being fearless because you have to sacrifice you, your body. Can you count, Baba, all the things you've done? Sadat. Yeah, naman. Yes, naman. It's like counting boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I know naman what I've done. You know, it's like, for example, my eyes, I've done it already. Diba, people always say, what's wrong with Dr. Bell? She can't even fix her eyes. Well, I was really born with one small eye and one big eye. That one is already structural. You can't really fix it. The bone, the muscle. But, of course, I want, I also was born with a lazy eye. So, even in my pictures, when I was 11, parang, I'm stoned. There was a rumor nga I was on drugs. Or they say, kasi yung parang, it's supposed to be sexy, eh, di ba? Yung mapungay yeah. na mata. Uh -oh. But, kasi when you have an orgasm, hello, <laughs> you close your eyes like that. And you point your toes. Did you know that's why Lobotan makes his shoes so painful? Uh, because he's copying his mimicking your position when you have orgasm. an orgasm. That's why the ano is so high, the the pitch of the shoe, and then it's so you point your toes, it's so sakit gumamit ng lobotan. See all the things I learn about beauty. So anyway, I'm like, so the doctor Lopez has to keep cutting the muscle and shortening it, because oh. it still gets long, and then he cuts it again, shortens it, and so I did my first breath when I was forty. Then I did it again when I was fifty. So I'm sixty three. So dapat magre breath, but I don't want any more. So I have to keep exercising. I'm really into ano now, strengthening my muscles in my face. So it's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you saw my, my IG, IG thing with Hayden. I made him do all these exercises because you have to consider that in your face, you have skin, you have bone, and you have muscle. Skin, we can do so many things to rejuvenate. Diba? You can do skin genius, bibache, per much. And then for your bone, you can put fillers. There's a lot of fake bone, like, or fillers act like bone. If you've lost bone, like when you get older, you, I lost some chin, so now I have voluma here, you mga ganon. But muscle, when you're young, it's round and tight. That's why if you look at Scarlett, she has cute cheeks and everything is round. The muscles are still round. When you get older, the muscles get longer. You start to look haggard. When you rejuvenate the skin, nadadala ng konti ang muscle, but really, because the muscle and skin are stuck together, the muscle, you don't do anything with the muscle when you do thermage or any, any rejuvenation machine. So the muscles will start pulling the skin down again. Then you get old. So ngayon, the only way you have to really exercise your muscle. So I'm coming out with a blog. Wow. <laughs> <the> Adna, <laughs> of exercising your muscle because I really can't do that for you. So you got to do it by yourself. Facial yoga work? Facial yoga, some exercises were good, some were not. I kind of, we've developed a lot of exercises over time, things that have worked for me. Uh, you look very funny when you do it, so don't do it in front of your spouse or your partner or whatever. But you really need to tighten the jawline, tighten the muscles here. Even the cheeks, they start to fall. That's why you have nasolabial folds because the muscles... Here, suddenly go down here. But even your lips, 
you have I always wonder why everybody ages here. Because when we talk, this is a very thin area. Because it has to be flexible so you can talk and chew. But also because of that, there's not much support. So you tend to age here. Right? So you have to strengthen the muscles around your mouth, strengthen the muscles around your eyes so that you don't, you know, not every, otherwise your eye, you'll have loose muscles everywhere. And then you want to move your cheeks back to where they were before. You can do it with fillers, but it's nicer when you also have a round cheek. So you have to do the muscle exercise. Yeah, let's include the, face, the facial exercises in our ballet. Ang tagal na ng exercises natin. I don't like to dance. So I like to do long exercise. One hour and a half, nag-workout pa tayo. So we have what to do across the floor. We have to do facial exercises, kegels. Nike train. Drink kimchi. Bali. Drink kimchi. Ang oh, I have a new tip today from Dr. Manahan also. Martin oh. Manahan. He's the what? best OB. If you're looking for an OB, ang galing-galing ni Dr. Martin Manahan. So for coronavirus, I, he just, my crystal just told me about it yesterday and it really works. It's amazing. So he's been in the hospital the whole time, never even gets a sore throat. He doesn't get sick. But you know what he does? He gets hydrogen peroxide and he dilutes it one-fifth hydrogen peroxide four-fifths water you mix it you drink it you gargle for like one minute i've never had such no sore throat no nothing no pain ang linis ang feeling wow. and your teeth become white and it's wow. so cheap diba? hydrogen peroxide lang. and it really because i always have you know i never took out my tonsils and parang i don't want to do it because it's painful but so i get a lot of sore throat and before it was fine but now that it's corona every time it's sore throat i'm panicking now oh my gosh this is the beginning of oh. so it's been really one of these things so when he when i try this gargle because we a lot of people are doing like when you go to the clinic you have to do rx or, you know, because the mouth is the dirtiest part of the body. That's why you get nasty. Because you keep talking and then the bacteria bounces to your skin. So you get pimples. But when I drank this thing, it's so sarap. You try it tonight. It's the best. Yeah. The same and hydrogen then, peroxide for wounds? That you use for wounds, yeah. And it's safe naman to swallow. Just in case you make a mistake and you swallow, you won't die. It's fine. But it doesn't taste very good. But you're just supposed to gargle and uh, like that for like at least 30 yeah, seconds to one to minute. Walk. Yeah, you try it. It's so good. Something so I see, really, you know, tips. Oh. <laughs> Something I really admire about you is that you really live life dancing to the beat of your own drum. You mm. defy societal expectations and norms about gender or age. Right? Like when they say... Her husband's so young, but then nobody gives a hoot when the husband is so much older than the wife, right? Right. Or oh, who you used to love, or if you want to have a baby at your age, go ahead. What yeah, I have? had 58, I think. Uh -oh. So where do you get this, what they call cute spa, or the audacity to live life as you damn please in a society where... Everyone grows up thinking, "Nako ano na lang sa nila? What do people think?" Were you always like this, or? Well, I think it's because you're. I'm an only child, so actually, I don't really. And I had the most supportive, loving parents who think that. I mean, they gave me good moral background. I think they taught me the proper values, and then, and they always encouraged me to be who I am. They never, right. you know, said, oh, nakakahiya. That's why I think in a way it's hard because, for example, for Hayden, he grew up in a, in a house of five kids uh, where it was very, people were very aware of what other people thought of him or in the family. But you have to look good. You don't think it's pahiya. My parents, talagang, you know, like, I remember they told me, no, yeah, just follow. You always just Ask God if you're doing the right thing. If you you're comfortable with it and you know you're you're not hurting anyone, then go do it. We have no problem. So wow. I grew up like that, and it's become such in a way. It's, it's one of the grounds. So I said Hayden and I are so different because sometimes I don't understand him when he's he's always held back by what might what might people think. So for me, for him to go and have you know to be with me when he was. 23 years younger. Parang, 
I, I, I really rebel at that stuff. Like, why, why is it that an older man, 40 years, you know, let's say 70, marry somebody 35, no big deal, right? Right. But right. if it's a girl, they really put you down. Like, it's all about money. It's after her money or whatever. You know, and I think Hayden had to go through a lot to be able to see it matters to him what people think. So it was such a hard decision also for him to fight for this relationship. But it, it works. Or even for... You know, we really thought, but then when we met early on, we decided, I said, you know, I'm already like this. He tell me about children. I said, well, I can't have kids now. I'm sure by that time. But it wasn't the money. We we're just dating, dating. But then I thought, oh, Baba, I should reserve already my, you know, just in case I want kids uh-huh. in the future because my kids are already grown, etc. But that even, you know, it was that kind of thing. Uh, and now, in a way, just open the doors. Now it's become... So many people have called me to do the same thing. Sometimes I wonder, did I do the right thing by by yeah. being a model for this? Because now a lot of my, you know, people, women who are in their 50s, 55, who can't have, they want to have children. Now they have time. Now they have money. And then, so they want to have kids. So now I know of at least 10 women who've had children with my doctor. Wow. So I'm thinking... God, was it the right? But they're so very happy and it gives them a second win in life. So I advise everybody out there. Always, I think one of the things quarantine has taught us is that have a life-work balance. Not that they spend so much time with family and children. They realize how important their families are. That they shouldn't spend so much time trying to make a living to give their children a good future, but not be with them in the present. Because now that they've been together, they realize, hey, it's so important to be a family. And, you know, and in a way, I know it's bad, but people are coming home from abroad because they're being sent home. At least now it's going to be a two-parent household. And I really feel that both mother and father are important for a child to grow up. And although maybe it won't be as comfortable a life, I didn't like what was happening before where we would work abroad, people would work abroad, the kids would be resentful because they didn't have parents. They became very materialistic. To punish their parents, they would ask for so many things. When what they really wanted was the parents' presence and the parents' love. But since they didn't have that, when the mom would say, what do you want me to get for you? And all, all the video games, all the like that, which doesn't really make them happy. And then now I think that they spend time together. They realize what they really want is it's relationship, it's, it's being together as a family. So, for example, for Bella, one of the big sacrifices we've done, which is going to be a big loss of money, but I think it's important, is that we've been wanting to, to really, since we're Christian, we really wanted to not have work on Sundays. But because we were, well, a lot of our clinics are in the malls and they're going to penalize us for not being open. But, and, and, you know, because we saw the income that happened on Sundays, my GM would say, are you really willing to give up this much money? And it sounds like a lot of money. So we were, I know, but then because of quarantine, this is our best time. So we decided from now on, yeah, we won't have Sundays anymore. We'll, oh, wow. Because quality time with family is so important. And, you know, at least, yeah, you, you get to, I think this is really a wake up call from God, this whole quarantine thing. I mean, I know that he didn't make it happen, but he allowed for it to happen. And a lot of people have, it's like a reset. Like you think you're so, you know, it all, life was just too fast before this. Traveling, everybody's into IG, you know, showing off where they were going, what they were wearing, all these very superficial things. And when this thing happened, it just stopped life. And then I think now we're back to basics. Like what is really important in life? What matters most? And then, and then, you know, so now I know so many people, they don't want to buy a shop anymore. They don't, we don't want to travel anymore. We just want to stay home and be with family. So, you know, and then it showed us also how powerful God is and right. how little we are. We can't do anything about this little virus until now we're so afraid. We're like, you know, when they showed all the animals out there and you were like in prison in our houses. We go, oh, man, no, but look, we saw the stars again. I haven't seen stars in Manila since I was what, 30 years ago, I think. Diba? But it's so nice. There's no pollu- I didn't get asthma the whole time. Everything was just so clean. Butterflies, birds, I don't know. So now that it's going back, I can feel my throat ano na naman, because there's pollution. Parang, oh, sana naman we don't go right back to where we were before quarantine. What do you think? I hope we bounce back. 
<laughs> and you're the queen of bouncing back from anything. You've been through oh, I the whole gamut of controversy. <laughs> Everybody knows everything that happened to you. How, how, what's the, the key to bouncing back controversy after hmm. controversy? How did you, <laughs> how did you, you know, I just take it one day at a time. I don't, I'm not a planner in that way. So I think because it's day by day and God is with me day by day, I, I make some bong, I cry, and then I find the strength. Diba? Actually, what God, Jesus said is, my, my, his strength is, per, is made perfect in my weakness. So it's really at my weakest points that I just surrender it all to Jesus Christ and then and things just fall into place it's never been it's not me I really don't think it's me and I think that's what we have to realize it's not us we're not that magaling you just surrender you have to act like everything depends on you because of course you can't be naman na bonjing bonjing ka lang Jesus ikaw nang bahala but you have to pray like everything depends on the Lord because together that's such a great combination and it's really the secret of bouncing back from anything Right. What are you? What have you learned about self-esteem, given your experience? And what are you teaching Scarlett about self-esteem, insecurity, especially in these days of social media where everybody compares each other, right? Well, Scarlett is. What have I learned about self-esteem? I think my self-esteem comes from knowing that I'm special because I'm the child of God. Literally, I know it sounds corny, but if God loves me, then of course I'm important. And I'm, but he loves everybody. So everybody's special in their own way. With Scarlett, many people have been concerned about, you know, how could you bring her into this IG world? You made her famous. How is she going to react? Well, to reassure everyone, Scarlett kind of has no idea of, <laughs> of how famous she is. She just wonders sometimes how everybody knows her name. But we're really disciplinarians in this house. Both of us are are strict and you know i i grew up very spoiled because i was an only child and of very good people very kind people who i could really literally even at five years old i could manipulate them and i remember doing so and i don't want scarlet's very smart and i regretted it because it's not a good life if you're spoiled when you are a child you don't you're not but I wasn't, things that were small for other people became big for me. If people didn't really love me, I got so shocked because I'm so used to being loved so much, right? So I always say I'm not going to allow Scarlett to be spoiled because I want her to know that life is not going to be a bed of roses. That there, Even if for her now it seems to be, but we have to be um, the ones who discipline her. I'm not afraid I used to be afraid because Hayden's a favorite and I'm, she's really a daddy's girl. And I used to be trying to make sip sip to her so I could also be favorite. But now I realize that I, as a favorite to her, and if I really love her, I have to discipline her and stop, you know, little things pa lang, you have to stop it because otherwise it's really, you know, like if I let her get away with something small, like not saying thank you once or answering back to her yaya once or whining, like, yeah, yeah. Because oh, for a while I wanted, I just let it so small, let it go, let it go. It becomes stronger and stronger until she develops a really hard heart. So right now I already made a deal with her. I said, Scarlett, I'm telling you now, I'm not going to do this anymore. I, every time you do something small, palang, I'm going to call you out on it. And I will spank you if you need to be spanked because this is for you. This is because I love you. I don't want you to grow up spoiled, um, disrespectful you know, entitled, because those are the things that I think are so bad when you, you're not grateful anymore or you're not kind. But why? Why is it? Why? But so many people feel entitled and I'm like, where did you get that attitude, right? So I don't want you to have it. So I can be the bad cop. I don't have a problem with it as long as she grows up a good human being. And, you know, I think the one thing that my dad pushed on me that I want her to have is you have to make a dent in the world. You have to make a difference in this world. You were put in this world for something, for some reason, and you have to find out what that is. And then you have to make a difference, a positive difference in this world. You don't, you're not just passing by here and then what you die, you didn't make a difference. So I'm very happy that I feel I made a difference in the world in which in my circle of influence, I know that I contributed to some, you know, positivity 
But so now I'm with Scarlett, I have no idea what she wants to be. She wants to be now a vet now. So let's see. But, you know, she really loves animals. So but whatever it is, I think she's born to be a leader. I feel we're just, you know, that Khalil Gibran, they are from us, but they're not ours. We, we just take care of them until, until they grow up. And then they're supposed to find whatever it is that they were put in the world for. And they say the two happiest days in your life or important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why you were born. Right. So I just have to guide her to find out why she was put here. And your why has always been to make everyone beautiful, right? But not actually my why is to make people happy. Oh, happy. the way I do it is to make them beautiful. Right. Yeah, because I don't want to just make people beautiful. A lot of people don't don't need it you know a lot of people judge people who are doing these things as vain and I applaud them I have no problem if you are comfortable not doing anything don't judge people who do you're left to your own opinion and I applaud you but I wasn't like that right my my self-confidence really came from looking better Right. Before when I had so many pimples and I was fat I'd go to a party and somebody you know when the Filipinos are so mean right I mean, they don't mean to be mean, but they're mean. So when you enter a party, they go, Uy, taba mo ngayon, ha? Ano nangyari sa'yo? Right away, I just turn around and go home. Oh. Or, why is your skin so bad? Ang daming mo tigyawan. Right away, I turn around and go home because, you oh. know, you're so excited to see your friends and then they make you insult. Right. And they, they're just making a comment. But, you know, parang, ang sakit. And, you know, I remember my hair was like this. I would be Divina Gracia ba? Divina Valencia. <laughs> so she used to wear her hair like this. I would so be like that because of all my pimples. So when I... Right. Now, Tina, I'm more confident. Hi. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I'm happier. I'm really a happier person. And especially, so it's just a way to get there. In these so. times of body love, body positivity, and then inclusivity, mm. right? All complexions should be beautiful. Others might mm. seem to as superficial or promoting only a certain colonial idea like maputi, matangsang ilong, payat. But for you, mm. it's empowering and life No, for me, it's so super empowering. You know, people, because I, I was a BS psychology major, right, in UP. So my two papers, I followed Nancy Atkoff. She's a uh, professor in Harvard. Yes. And, I, and I did the same studies here. So her whole thing is, she wrote a book, Survival of the Prettiest. Yeah, I read and it. what she's saying is, are we trained to appreciate beauty? Is this Because they used to blame magazines, right? Oh, right? Giving the fake ideal of what beauty is. But it shows, studies have showed by anthropologists that About babies, appreciation right? of beauty is, is already there. We're born. It's, it's, like, it's like looking for food. It's like housing. It's something that we naturally gravitate towards beautiful people. In fact, even in Scarlet, I noticed with her teachers, she's only three or four when she went to school, but her favorites are always the pretty ones. You know what I mean? It's such, for me, not being born pretty or not being born with good skin or whatever, for me, it was, it, it would rankle me that people who were beautiful, who had a genetic, who were lucky in the genetic raffle, they got good genes. They somehow felt superior. People made them feel superior. People would hover around them so excited to be near this beautiful person who used to really be self-centered, not very smart because they don't bother to study because they're just pretty. People want to be near them. And then I said, this is so unfair. What about my friends who are not so pretty, very intelligent, so kind? Nobody would make them concern because they're a little chubby or... So because this is unfair. This is an unfair world. People <laughs> who are good looking have an advantage. They really, really do. Even when hiring people, I'm sure, you know, we I remember dressing people. I had a magna cum laude dress for Mataba with pimples. And then I had a uh, 2.25 average girl, <laughs> but sexy and beautiful. Who would they hire? The 2.25 girl because she's makes the company look good. So it was just, I said, I'm really going to equalize this world. This is You're not a good advantage. I'm the equalizer. That's what I call it. <laughs> you know, the way you should be judged on integrity, intelligence, working, right. hard working, not on your looks. It shouldn't be a factor. So if everybody's good looking, hello, then it becomes a non-factor. Or if there are good looking people and some people who feel comfortable being not so good looking, but they still project well, then, you know, it's all about perception, right? So... 
Yes. So just look at me as the equalizer. So that, you know, there's no advantage from being good looking. Right. You're a model. How did that make you feel? Well, I didn't know I could did be you? a model. When I was young, I always thought I was so ugly because I didn't fit the colonial ideal, right? I wasn't, hmm. my eyes were not big. I wasn't Tisai. Hmm. So I had no idea until I read uh, Vogue and saw people who look like me, like all the extremely th- extreme because uh, models have extreme features, right? Like a sharp jawline or uh-huh. where ganda ng jawline. Oh. So in Vogue, maganda pala ako, but in Philippine society, feeling ko hindi. So until I became a model, you're right, it's empowering when you claim your beauty. If you don't know, if you're not aware that you have a certain kind of beauty uh-huh. that appeals, until you claim it, it's really empowering when you do claim it. Because people treat you differently or perceive you fairly or unfairly. Right. That's true. No. See, so you're a, you're a victim as well. But you know, it's you know what the best part of my job is when people are not good looking when they're young, they try to make up for it, right? So they read more, they study more, they're more right. intelligent, right. they develop their personality. They try and then harder. when they get older, they try <laughs> harder. And then when they're older and then they become beautiful, like we do things to make them beautiful, they're the perfect package. What's sad to watch are people who are beautiful when they're young. They're used to getting away with everything because right. they're gorgeous. Um, people serve them. Then they get old and the looks start to disappear. They don't know what to do Doesn't because they work. haven't developed their other facets because they were just right. so dependent on being good looking and i see it all the time because of course i've seen so many especially like in showbiz but people just you know they don't even have to move or ask for anything people just oh the good more can i help you what can i do for you and so the, the women so, yeah. who come in trying to uh look like specific celebrities or asking for somebody's nose ganun pa ba? or even in reasons nila for getting work done it's much less common now. When I first started my practice, there were so many people go, coming into the clinic. They want this nose, this nose. Right. Nah, nah. And then and I'd always try to convince them, um, you know, you want to be the best version of you. You don't, because we really go for natural looking people. I don't want our patients to be halata that they yeah. did something. Right. So, I mean, I Bello is known for natural looking Parang may pinagawa, I don't know, hindi mo mahalata. And I'm very proud of it. They cannot tell what you did. You just look better. So right now, I think people are, are becoming much, much more confident. And even the Morena thing, it used to be, I was so tired of hearing everybody wanting to be white, 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 white. I'd always try to convince them, ay nako, if I had your color, it's so pantay. And, you know, I think what people want now is... Whatever color skin they have, it just has to be even tone, no black spots, no marks, etc. But people are owning their you know, and being proud of being. So you're actually not mocha pro whitening. No, I'm not. For me personally, I think I look better when I'm fair. I think when you're morena, kasi, you have to be really beautiful. You have to have nice features. But in the Philippines, pag maputi ka, nadadala na. Alam mo yon. Even if you're not... Hey, this is the reality of the situation the here. Colonial, a lot of the guys I talk to, colonial yeah, they mentality. have a colonial mentality. It started kasi, because di ba, the Spanish were our bosses for yeah. 400 years. Correct. So, parang, and then all our saints that we, we, that we right. adore and we pray to are all... Mestiza. So for us, that is or even the, but the one oh, picture oh. of Jesus, right? He's actually Middle Eastern, but his portrayal is blue-eyed. Is, okay. is Mapute, right? Yes. Yeah, so now, though, but it's not going. Now, if you are tanned, a lot of people want to stay tanned. But, you know, the sun is very bad for you. Right. So in a way, it's good if you don't tan yourself. But if you're really naturally morena, then it's very... I think it's very attractive now. But so the, I hear more and more men liking Morena the people, girls. Do women still come in for like because they might lose their husband or they do it for other people instead of themselves? Oh, yeah. There still are. 
The, oh. Those are the emergency makeover things. Because <laughs> some Filipinas, the ba, they, once they have children, they forget about themselves. For us, it's a, but it's a good characteristic that you are a woman for others. So they take care of their children, they take care of their husbands, they eat stress eat, they eat so fast, they don't work out. Then they find themselves overweight and then their husbands might be fooling around with a younger, sexier girl. And then they realize, oh my gosh, I didn't take care of myself. Because the reality of it is the men expect us to be everything. They expect you to be beautiful and sexy and take care of them and take care of the kids. And so you have to be really aware. Meanwhile, uh, that they, meanwhile the, men, and, the men can In look, the meantime, they can get big. They can look fat. They or, can gain weight. They can lose hair. <laughs> Oh, nga. unfair, unfair, but yeah. that's the reality of the situation. You also mentioned so, before that you used to have a psychologist in your clinics to check if people were getting surgery for the right reasons, but now you no right. longer do. How come? Yeah, we still refer, we we'll still refer some people if we feel they're because okay, the wrong reasons to get surgery are your boyfriend left you and you want him back. Okay, so that's not good. Or your husband, because it doesn't necessarily mean that if you become beautiful, you'll get them back, diba. Right? It's more for your own self-esteem. Or people who are bagong hiwalay. Or people who want to look like somebody totally different. These are the people. Or people who get addicted to surgery. You know, there's a lot of diminishing returns. Eh? There are certain things you can do and you look better and better and better. And then you get to a point where you look good. That is the best version of you. Maintain na. But no, they want pa more. They want pa to do this, to do that, whatever. When it gets there, our doctors are trained to say no. How? You can't you look good already. And then we refer them to the, you know, parang it's a deeper problem than just their looks. So you But actually- sometimes what happens is, oh yeah, we turn on people. Or they go to another doctor, they come back. It's bad nga. Then they want us to fix. And so... But our hands off. Because people get high on the finger, wow. but sometimes they don't know when to stop. Right. And you know, so I think it's our responsibility to tell them this is this is your best. Okay. Hi. Wi-Fi password. No, wala na. Is Ala. <laughs> you may hear kanina. Ala. No, wala na tayo. Zoom ba to? Forty-five minutes. You're still there. Uh, I know. I'm still okay. You're still there. I'm still... So what's your? Uh, yes, I see. Parting message of uh, how everyone can feel beautiful or rely on their self-esteem, develops enough self-esteem so that they'll feel beautiful, whatever happens or however they hmm. look like or love oh, themselves. This is a hard question. What's my me- yes, love, love, your, love yourself, but yeah, no, I think you really. Everybody has issues. And like for me, adoption was a big issue for me. Um, I felt I, know, I wasn't good enough that even my own parents couldn't love me. But how, how bad are you that even right. your own parents cannot love you? And then you kind of continue in your life where you find people who, who will, you have your bad opinion of yourself. You have to, what did I do, Ba? You know I read a lot of inspirational books. I really worked on the, I, I wrote down what I felt bad about, about myself. And then I wrote down what I could do to make myself feel better. But I think affirmations are extremely, extremely important. In fact, one, one of the things I wanted to do was make some sort of um, meditation that would affirm, affirm you. Because if you just hear it enough, um, the words are very strong and it, it increases your your self-esteem. And of course, don't be so much about yourself. I think my self-esteem actually went up when I stopped being about myself. Okay. You know, and, and not just thinking, oh, me, me, me here. I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not, so, I'm pangit, I'm whatever. But when I, I try to care more about other people and see and help other people and make lives better, their happiness gave me, I know, since I wanted to make a difference in this world, they made me feel better about myself. Because when you get dwell on yourself too much, it's, it's actually very self-defeating. You just end up spiraling down. 
And it's the time that when I got out of myself and I cared about more causes and I cared about and I was successful in life that you develop little by little, you build up your self-esteem. So in these times, I think you just, what? I think prayer is very important. Having a grateful heart is very, very a grateful attitude. Being kind to other people, and this is something, and contributing to making the the country better, this whole situation better, rather than being part of the problem. So, there is, do not conform yourself to the world, but transform yourself with the renewing of your mind. You have to renew your mind and go to a better place and be just really more. You know, whenever you hear ugly, only think of what is pure, what is good, what is true. When you start getting to a group where everybody's starting to put the whole situation down, you know, try to stop it or get out because, you know, or even, you know, you just really have to take care of your mental health at this time as well. Because these are very trying times and I've seen a lot of people have breakdowns because it's not normal. So you have to be more aware that of taking care of yourself, both physically and mentally. Wow, what a beautiful message to think about <laughs> over the weekend. Thank you so much, Vicky. Thank you, Mayor. Am I, the most, I think I'm the most talkative guest you've had. <laughs> but every minute was worth it. We have so much to learn from your example about living life to the fullest, no matter what catastrophes are thrown your way. But, you know, besides all your achievements and accolades, what strikes me most of all is that in the words of our common friend who lives in Paris, hello, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, you are so well loved because your kindness and generosity are legendary. And I oh, think you make me cry. Thank you for appreciating best, and trying. That's the best kind oh. of impact to make on the world. So thank you so much, Vicky. Bye, classmate. Hope to Bye, dance classmate. with you soon. See you soon. <laughs> and thank you shout so out to pa teacher perry take care thank you for guesting i really thank enjoyed you it also. Bye. bye thank you everyone this has been tiktok and i'll bye. see you on monday bye